Hello traders, I'm Luke from Discipline Trader. This video is a complete tutorial for the MetaTrader 4 app. As I've done with previous tutorials, I've broken this entire video down into different sections and added timestamps to each of those sections so that you can navigate this video if needed. So what you can do is either watch this whole video through and become a complete professional with the MetaTrader 4 app, or if needed, if you're just looking for a few pieces of specific information, you should be able to find these with relative ease using the timestamps in the description below. The brokerage that I've used throughout the video is ACY Securities. You may have seen me mention these in a couple of my previous videos on the channel. If you want to check these out, I'll leave the affiliate link to them in the description below. Now, some people have said that I have a relatively strong Yorkshire accent and it can be somewhat difficult to understand what I'm actually saying. And if that is the case for you, please don't worry. What I've done this time is add the script for the video as subtitles. So if there's any points where you can't understand what I'm saying, just enable the subtitles by pressing the little CC button across the bottom of the YouTube player and you should get the text subtitles uh, for the entire video if needed. So I hope that helps. Right then, let's get you mastering the MetaTrader 4 application. To download the MetaTrader 4 application, simply go to your app store. Depending what device you have, this will vary. On an Android device, this will be the Play Store, and on an Apple device, this will be the App Store. Once opened, just search for the application called MetaTrader 4. The application should look like the one you can see on screen now. Download and install this application. Once this has completed, you should be able to launch the application. When you open the application for the first time, it will automatically open a new demo account for you. If you haven't picked a broker account yet, or don't have an account set up with anyone else, I'd advise just using this demo account for now, until you feel ready to move over to a real broker account later. I'll show you why this is important later in the video. If you already have an account you want to log into, then you can do this by clicking the menu button in the top left corner of the screen it will look like three small horizontal lines. This will open the sidebar menu, then click Manage Accounts at the top of this sidebar. Here you will see the existing demo account that the application has just opened for you. To log into another account, press the plus icon across the top of the screen. This will bring up a new menu. Press the Login to Existing Account button. Simply search for the server of your existing broker. If you are unsure what this is, they usually email you the details for this process when you open the account. Here on screen you can see that ACY Securities have sent me an email with my account number, password and server name. Once you have found the correct server, simply click on it and it will bring you to the login menu. Enter your account number in the top box and your password in the box below. Then press sign in at the bottom of the screen. You should be then redirected to the account screen and see that you are now logged into the account you just added. You can see on screen that I'm now logged into my ACY Securities demo account and that the MT4 demo account the application set up for me is now inactive below this. If I ever wanted to log back into this, I can click the account, then press sign in as the login details will be remembered for me. If you want to remove an account, just press and hold on the account box and then hit delete on the menu that appears. The first screen you will see when you open the application is the Quotes screen. This screen is essentially a watch list of different markets. The market ticker symbol is shown on the left hand side of this list. These symbols refer to specific markets and aren't always easy to understand and may vary slightly from broker to broker. Underneath the market ticker symbol you will see the current time. This is set based on your broker's time zone settings and cannot be changed. You may notice that this quoted time doesn't match your own time zone. This doesn't matter. Beneath this you can see the price spread for the market. To the right hand side of this you will see two prices in a large font. The price on the left is the sell price and the price on the right is the buy price. The spread shows you the difference between these two prices. The low and high price below the sell and buy prices are the lowest price of the day and the highest price of the day so far. You can add, rearrange and remove markets from this list by using the two buttons in the top right hand corner. To add more markets to this list, 
click the plus icon. This will open a new screen with a search bar at the top and folders below. Any available markets will be sorted in the corresponding folders. So if you were searching for the euro dollar market for example, you could either search this in the search box at the top or look in the forex folder and select it from there. Please note that if the market you are looking for is already in your quotes list, it will not appear in this search. The available markets in this search will vary depending on what market your broker offers. As you can see, when I'm using the demo account set up by the MT4 application, I can only see a selection of Forex markets in this window. However, when I'm logged into my ACY Securities account, I can see various market types including oil, metals, CFDs, commodities and cryptos. You will also notice that I have a lot more Forex markets available in the Forex folder. This is because ACY Securities offer the availability to trade all these markets. If you are new to trading and want to learn more about this, including how to pick a broker, I'd recommend watching my Get Started Demo Trading video series and my Trading Basics video series available on the YouTube channel. Just head over to the playlist section on the Discipline Trader channel. To rearrange the list of markets in the Quotes tab, just press the pencil icon in the top right corner of the screen. You should now see a little drag icon appear next to each ticker symbol. Just press and drag each market to your desired location to rearrange this list. Once you are done, just press the back arrow in the top left corner to return to the tab view. To delete a market from this list, again press the pencil icon in the top right corner of this screen, then press the bin icon in the top right corner. You should see checkboxes appear next to all the markets in this list. Simply check all the markets you want to remove and then press the bin icon again and it will delete the selected markets. Press the back arrow in the top left corner to return to the main screen. You may notice that you are unable to delete one or more markets from the quotes list. This is because either the market is currently open in the chart screen, which we will look at later in the video, or because you have a live trade or pending trade on that market. Again, we'll cover this a little bit later in the video. But if either of these things are true, the app won't let you remove the market from the quotes list. You can change the settings for the quotes tab by opening up the sidebar menu by clicking in the top left corner of the screen and then clicking the settings button. Under the quotes heading you can deselect advanced mode and this will give you a simplified quotes tab with only the market ticker symbol, sell price and buy price displayed for each market. I noticed that the quotes tab was on advanced mode by default when I first opened the app even though this option wasn't selected so you may need to turn it off and on a few times to begin with if yours is a little bugged like mine. Using the navigation menu across the bottom of the screen, the second tab you will see is the chart tab. This shows you the chart for the last selected market. You can see the market ticker symbol being currently shown in the top left corner of the chart window. To open the chart for a different market, just head back over to the quotes tab, click the ticker symbol of the market you want to see and then press the open chart option. This will take you back to the chart tab but it will now show the market you just selected. You can also press the icon that looks like a dollar sign across the top of the chart window and this will show a simple list of all the markets on your quotes tab. You can use this menu to quickly change the chart screen market. If the market you are looking for isn't on this list, you'll need to add it to the quotes tab list as demonstrated earlier. Next to the market ticker symbol is the time frame notation. As you can see on screen, this is currently showing M5, which means we are looking at a 5 minute chart. To change the time frame of the chart, just press the clock icon across the top of the chart window. This will then show a list of different available time frames from 1 minute to 1 month. Just select the time frame you want to see and the chart will change to the selected time frame. Please note that you cannot have custom time frames on this app you can only choose from the options in this time frame list. Below this you should be able to see four numbers. These four numbers are the open, high, low and close prices for the current candle. You will see them changing as the current candle develops. The chart type will be set to candlestick by default. If you are unfamiliar with how these charts work, please watch my Trading Basics series where I cover this specifically. To find this, head over to the playlist section on the Discipline Trader channel. The chart will show the price scale on the right hand side and the time scale along the bottom of the chart. Again, if the price doesn't make sense to you at the moment, 
The Trading Basics course on the channel will teach you how to read this. If you want to change the chart type, press the sidebar menu button in the top left corner of the screen, then press the settings button. Under the charts headline, the first option you will see is line type. Press this and you will be given the options of bar chart, candlestick and line chart. Just select the chart type you want and the chart window will change to this type. The chart window allows on chart indicators and standalone indicators in separate windows below the chart. By default, you should see an RSI indicator in a window below and a moving average indicator on the chart itself. You can add and remove indicators by pressing the F symbol across the top of the chart window. This will bring up the indicator screen. Here, you will be able to see the indicators that are currently applied to the chart window. By default, you should see a moving average under the main chart headline and the relative strength index or RSI under the indicator window 1 headline. To add a new indicator to the chart, press the F plus symbol next to the main chart headline. Then select the indicator you want to add. This will then bring up the settings window for that indicator. Once you are happy, just press done in the top right corner and the indicator will be added to the chart window. Using the MACD as an example, you will see that the MACD indicator will be added in a separate window below the RSI indicator. You can also add more than one indicator to an individual indicator window if needed. To do this, press the F plus symbol next to the indicator window you want to add an extra indicator to, and then select the indicator you want to add. For example, if we wanted to add the MACD to the RSI indicator window, we could press the F plus symbol next to the indicator window 1 headline, then select MACD, and this would add the MACD over the RSI indicator. This is helpful when working with a small screen on a mobile device, but can make reading each indicator difficult. You can amend the settings for any active indicators by opening the indicator window by pressing the F symbol across the top of the chart window. Then simply press and hold the indicator you want to amend. This will give you the option to edit the indicator or delete it. Press edit and the settings window for that indicator will open. Again, just press done in the top right corner of the screen when you are happy. To delete an indicator from the chart window, again, open the indicator window using the F symbol across the top of the chart window. You can then either press and hold the indicator you want to delete and press the delete option, or you can press the bin icon in the top right corner of the screen and then check the checkboxes of the indicators you want to delete. Once you are happy, press the bin icon again and the selected indicators will be removed. You can use the crosshair tool to inspect the chart with more precision. To use this tool, press the crosshair icon across the top of the chart window. This will then turn the crosshair cursor on. You can now drag the crosshair anywhere on the chart to see the price levels, times, the open, high, low and close prices for the selected candle. Just press the crosshair icon again to turn this off. You can open the quick multi-menu by clicking anywhere on the chart. This opens up a circular menu that has quick options for timeframes, crosshair cursor, indicator menu and drawing tools. All the menus we have covered already work exactly the same when accessed from this menu. Pressing the drawing tools icon will bring up a menu of different available drawing tools. These are separated into different categories labelled Lines, Channels, GAN, Fibonacci, Elliot and Shapes. To add any of these to your chart, press the tool you want to add and it will take you back to the chart window. I will add a simple horizontal line as an example. Simply press on the chart where you want to add the tool. If you press and hold when adding the tool, you can drag and place it where required. A small box will also appear in the top left corner showing a magnified view of where your finger is pressing so that you can accurately place the tool where you want it. Once you are happy, just raise your finger from the screen. If you need to adjust the tool, you can press and hold it again to move it again. Just make sure the tool is selected before doing this. You can see if the tool is selected as it will display small black dots either side of the line or on whichever tool you are using. If these are not showing, just tap the tool and they should appear. Don't worry if you miss and the multi-menu appears, just press elsewhere on the screen to close the menu and try again. Once selected, you can then adjust the tool. 
You can also amend the settings of the tool by pressing and holding the tool until the tool details appear along the top of the chart window. Once you can see this, you can press the pencil icon to open the settings window. Here, you can change a variety of settings depending on which tool you are looking at. For example, on the line tool, we can change the name of the line, manually enter the price level for the line, change the market it is applied to, specify which timeframes the line is visible on, and change the color and thickness of the line. Once you are happy with these settings, press the done button in the top right corner of the screen. You can also delete a drawing tool by again pressing and holding it until the tool details appear across the top of the screen. You can then press the bin icon to delete the tool completely from the chart window. You can enter a trade directly from the chart window by clicking the new order button in the top right corner of the screen. This will open the market order screen. At the top of this screen, you will see the ticker symbol and the market name of the market you are about to trade. This will be the same market you are looking at on the previous chart window. If you want to change this market, you can either go back to the quotes tab, tap the market you want to trade and press new order. Or in the market order screen, you can press the dollar symbol in the top right corner of the screen and choose from a list of markets from your quotes tab. Underneath the market symbol, you will see the order type. By default, this is set to market execution. If you are unfamiliar with different market orders, I would recommend you watch the Trading Basics series found in the playlist section of the Discipline Trader channel. Clicking this option, you can choose market execution, which is the same as at market price, buy limit, sell limit, buy stop and sell stop. Below this, you can set your position size this is quoted in lots and can be amended by either using the buttons either side of the central number or by clicking on the number in the center and entering the number of lots you want to trade manually. Again, position sizing is covered in the Trading Basics series on the channel if you need to learn more about this. Below this, you will see two prices for the market you are looking at. The sell price is on the left and the buy price is on the right. If you choose anything except market execution, you will see a box below the sell and buy prices to enter the market price you want the order to be set at. So for example, if you wanted to set a sell stop order, you would need to enter the price you want this order to be triggered. Once price moves down past this level, the order will be triggered. Below this, you will see a red and green box to enter your stop loss and take profit levels. Enter the stop loss level you want in the red box and the take profit level you want in the green box. Again, you can use the buttons either side or simply click in the box and manually type the level you want. Again, if you are using any order type apart from market execution, you will see an expiration setting below the stop loss and take profit boxes. By default, this is set to GTC, which stands for good till cancelled, which simply means this order will stay active until it is either triggered or cancelled by you. Alternatively, you can set this to specified which then lets you set a date and time to cancel the order if it hasn't been triggered by the day and time set. Below this, you will see a graph with two lines. This simply shows the movement of the market in a line graph form, the blue line being the sell price and the red line being the buy price. Once you are happy with all the details for the market order, press either the sell by market button or buy by market button to submit your sell or buy order you will then be redirected to the trade tab. If this is a market execution order, the trade will be opened instantly and you will see it listed under the positions heading on the trade tab. If it is another type of order, you will see the pending order listed under the orders heading on the trade tab. You can open the trade tab by clicking the arrow button on the navigation menu across the bottom of the screen. If you have any open trades, you will see a live profit and loss amount for all your trades combined at the top of the screen. This will be fluctuating as the market prices change for any of those open trades. There will be no number visible here if there are no open trades on your account. Below this, you will see a list of numbers specific to your account. Balance is simply the amount you have in your trading account, not including any open positions. So any unrealized profits or losses will not be taken into account in the balance figure. Equity is the same number as the balance figure, but this time it does include any profits or losses from open positions. 
If you have open trades on the account, this number will fluctuate as those trades fluctuate too. Free margin is the amount in your trading account that isn't attributed to any open positions. Margin level percentage is the total amount in your account divided by the margin amount needed to open the position. Margin is the amount in your account that is attributed to open positions. Again, if you need to learn more about any of this information, please go and watch the Trading Basics series in the playlist section of the Discipline Trader channel. Under these numbers, you will see any live trades or pending orders that are active on your account. Under the positions heading, you will see a list of all the live trades. For each trade, you will see the market ticker symbol on the left hand side, whether it is a buy or sell position, the position size, the price you entered the market at, the price the market is currently trading at, and your unrealized profit or loss on the trade on the right hand side. Under the orders heading, you will see a list of any pending market orders placed. These orders will stay in this list until they are either triggered or cancelled. Once the order is triggered, you will see the live trade under the positions heading. Similar to the open positions, you can see the market ticker symbol for the order, what type of order it is, the position size for the order, the price the order is set at, and the current market price for the market on the right hand side. You can also click on any of the trades or orders listed in the screen to see more details about them. Clicking on one of them will reveal the stop loss level set, take profit level set, trade ID, swap amount, tax amount and any commissions. You can hide these details again by re-clicking on the trade or order. You can arrange these lists in a few different ways by pressing the sort button across the top of the screen. This then lets you sort these lists by either order, which is trade direction, time, symbol and profit. You can click the same option twice to sort the lists in the reverse order for that setting if desired. You can also enter new trades directly from this tab by clicking the new order button in the top right corner of the screen. This will then open the new order screen that we looked at earlier. To close or modify a trade or pending order, you can press and hold on the trade or order you want to amend. This will bring up a menu that differs slightly depending whether you have clicked on a trade or an order. If you press and hold on a trade, you can then close the trade, open a new order on the same market, modify the stop loss and take profit levels, or open the chart window for that market. Opening the same menu on a pending order lets you modify the order levels, delete the order, or open the chart window for that market. You can also access these menus by sliding the trade or order entries to the left to reveal some quick buttons. The tick symbol opens the trade screen to close the trade, the pencil button opens the screen to edit the levels, and the chart button opens the chart window for that market. You can open the history tab by pressing the in tray button on the navigation menu across the bottom of the screen. This screen shows you the trade history of your account. It will show you the history of the current day only. You can change this by clicking the calendar button in the top right corner. It has some preset time periods to choose from, or you can press custom period and pick a start and end date for the time period you want to see. This tab will show you the profit and loss for the time period selected at the top of the screen. As far as I'm aware, the balance figure is always the same as the profit figure. I don't know how or when these numbers vary. If anybody watching this video knows, please let us know in the comments below and I will pin the comment if needed. Below the profit numbers you will see a list of all the closed positions for the time period selected. A trade will only show in this list if it has been closed in the selected history time period. As with the trade tab, you can see the market ticker symbol, trade direction, position size, opening price, closing price and realized profit or loss on the right hand side. You can also click on each trade entry to reveal the same trade details as before. This includes the stop loss level, take profit level, trade ID, swap amount, taxes and commissions if applicable. As with the trade tab, you can sort this list by clicking the button with the two arrows across the top of the screen. You can sort by symbol, order, which is trade direction, opening time, closing time and profit. And again, if you click the same option twice, it will reverse the order for that setting. You can also refine the list to only show certain markets if desired 
by clicking the dollar sign button across the top of the screen. This will show a list of all the different markets within the current list. Choosing an option will then only show this market in the list below. You can press the dollar sign button again and then press all symbols to return to the full list. The news tab is accessed by clicking the newspaper icon on the navigation menu across the bottom of the screen. This tab is supposed to show upcoming news announcements to my knowledge, but not all brokers actually provide this feed. So if your news tab is blank like mine on screen, then it's likely that your broker simply doesn't provide this. You can access the messages tab by clicking the dialog bubble button on the navigation menu across the bottom of the screen. This syncs with the MQL5 website. If you have an account on the website, you can log into it here and access the chats for that account from this tab within the MetaTrader 4 app. This is something I have never used, but I've set an account up for this demonstration. You can see that you are able to chat with other MQL5 members within the MT4 app if you have an account by pressing the plus icon in the top right corner of the screen. You can do this as a private chat, group chat or channel. You can find other members by searching for them in the search bar provided. As well as the navigation menu across the bottom of the screen, the MT4 app also has a sidebar menu that can be accessed by clicking the little sandwich menu button in the top left corner of the screen. This menu also contains the six tabs we've already looked at in the main navigation menu, as well as some extra screens. I'll cover these now. To access the mailbox screen, you can press the sidebar menu button in the top left corner of the screen and then press mailbox. This screen shows messages direct from your broker. These are often just service update messages. If your broker needed to contact you about anything important, they would do it directly via phone or email, not through this screen. Clicking on the economic calendar button will redirect you to your app store to download Trade Days, which is an economic news calendar app. I don't use this app and even when installed, pressing the economic calendar button in the MT4 app still directs you to the app store to open Trade Days so it's not a great implementation of an economic news calendar. I just stick to using the free economic calendar provided on forexfactory.com forward slash calendar. To access the settings screen, click on the sidebar menu button in the top left corner of the screen and then press settings. Here you can change the settings for the quotes, charts, messages, news and interface. In the Quotes section, enabling Advanced Mode will change the details shown in the Quotes tab so that the extra details are listed, as we looked at earlier. You can also turn off and on the order sounds by checking or unchecking the box below. In the Charts section, you can change the chart type, you can choose from a bar chart, candlestick chart or line chart. You can choose whether to display the open, high, low and close prices on the chart. You can enable a data window that appears when using the crosshair tool on the chart screen. This data window will show you the indicator values, if you have any applied to the chart that is, for the point that the crosshair is on when on the chart screen. You can enable show volumes to show the volumes on the chart screen for the time period completed, depending what time frame chart you are looking at. You can enable and disable the trade levels on the chart when in live trades. These levels give you a visual representation of where you entered the market and where your stop loss and take profit levels are set if applicable. You can enable time period separators that draw heavier dashed vertical lines to show where each significant time period starts and ends. These separators will show the start and end of each year on the monthly and weekly time frames, start and end of each month on the daily time frame and start and end of each day on all time frames below the daily time frame. You can enable the show ask level option which toggles whether the red line showing the buy price is shown on the chart as well as the blue line showing the sell price. You can also customize all the colors of all the different elements of the chart screen. To do this press on the element you want to change and then select the color you want it to be. Once you are happy just press the done button at the bottom of the screen. In the messages section you can find the MetaQuotes ID number, configure the vibration settings for any alerts, choose a notification ringtone and set when you want the app content to auto download depending on your internet connection type. In the interface section you can enable the tablet interface 
which changes the interface of the entire app, so it is better for using on a tablet type device. To access the journal screen, press the sidebar menu button in the top left corner of the screen and then press the journal button. This screen shows you all the actions you have taken within the app. There is a journal entry for each action that logs the time the action was started and a description of what the action was. This is not a log for your trading history, that is found by clicking on the in-tray icon on the navigation menu across the bottom of the screen. Within the sidebar menu, there are a few buttons that will redirect you to web pages on the MQL5 website. These are the account monitoring button, traders community button, and trading applications button. These can be useful if you have an MQL5 account, but can be just ignored if you don't. The brokerage that I have used is ACY Securities. As mentioned in some of my other videos, I've been using them for a little while now and have been very impressed. If you want to check them out, I'll leave my affiliate link in the description below. If you do opt to use them, feel free to let me know what you think and how you get on. There isn't a specific ruler tool in the mobile app version of MT4, however you can use the trendline tool to measure the price. Simply add a trendline to your chart, start it at the point you want to measure from, and hold and drag it to the point you want to measure to. You will see three numbers appear in the top right corner of the chart screen as you drag the end point around. The number in the middle shows the number of pips multiplied by 10. So if the number in the centre shows 100, you know this is 10 pips. And that covers everything you need to know about the MetaTrader 4 mobile application. I have a detailed tutorial on the channel for the desktop version 2 if you want to learn more about that. And for anybody that is new to trading, I have a few playlists on the channel to help you with the basics and to get you started demo trading. I really hope you found this tutorial useful. If you have, please leave a like on the video so more people find it too. Also, consider subscribing to the channel for more content designed to help develop your trading knowledge. Thanks again traders and have fun with the MT4 app.